Son of a bitch. Where'd you find a steering wheel? I didn't. I had a Frisbee in the trunk and I taped it on. That's right, I MacGyvered the donk out of this thing and it worked flawlessly. Actually, I hit a ton of stuff on the way over here. It was awful. Oh, of course you did. Yeah. Amy? What up, bro? I need you to climb back on that strongness ladder, and I need you to climb pretty high. How high? Remember that time we went to the deli for cold cuts and the ticket machine was broken, so you found out what time everyone arrived and made them get in a single file line from earliest to latest? Yeah. Higher. Copy that. <laughs> you might want to stand back for this, sir. It can get pretty intense. <laughs> All right, you mooks. Our union health plan has 100% reimbursement for out-of-state ambulance rides. Scully will fake a medical emergency. Don't need to fake it. Always having at least one. Great. You call an ambulance and have it take us here to Monroe, Louisiana. The ambulance can drive 25 miles over the posted speed limit, so we'll get there by 9 p.m. There's a small airport there, mostly servicing crop dusters. Of course, they can't take passengers. But thanks to a loophole in HR 377551, police officers are allowed to commandeer any plane in the interest of national security. The crop duster will land at an airstrip outside of Finksburg, Maryland. We take a cab to Baltimore, jump on the 6.40 a.m. train to New York, arriving at 9.26. Kevin will meet us at Penn Station with a fresh captain's uniform. From there, it's a 29-minute cab ride to One Police Plaza. You change on the way, and we should get to your meeting with five minutes to spare. <laughs> Stop clapping, you idiots! We gotta move! 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 I love her. Welcome to the boil, bus. Why are we getting this whack ride? Charles refuses to accept what close friends we are. He thinks you're trying to escape and that your crew's on the lookout for the Trans Am, so he insisted we switch into his weird family bus. That's ridiculous. Isn't it? It doesn't matter what vehicle we're in. That's what I said. I'm gonna escape from you either way. Exactly. Wait, what was that? I still don't understand. What do you mean you're escaping? Sorry, bro, plan's already in motion. Trudy came to you, you took the bait. Come on. If you were really trying to escape, why would you tell me? Honestly, I didn't like lying to you. You're a good friend. Well, if I'm such a good friend, why are you trying to escape from me? I'm not trying to escape from you. I'm trying to escape from prison. Let me ask you this. Do you know why I stole that car? Because you love doing crimes? That's me directly quoting your catchphrase. First of all, my catchphrase is slurp, slurp. You've never once said that. I say it constantly. Second of all, me loving crime is classic empty bravado. The truth is, I was arrested when I was 22 for something stupid. When I got out, nobody would hire me because I had a criminal record. My dreams of being a landscape architect were out the window. That was your dream? I wanted to be the black Edward Scissorhands. Oh, that's great. I get all that, but that's not what this is about. I mean, you could have escaped from anyone, but you chose to set me up, and now my job and my name are all on the line. You used me, Doug. You're a bad friend. You're the bad friend. I got you a tracksuit. Tigers and toques. Might as well be a jumpsuit, a prison jumpsuit. You're taking me to prison. Peralta. There's a call for you. Oh, is it a casting agent from Double Deer? I submitted as a kid. Maybe they're finally calling to put me on the show. You think they'd be calling 30 years later? All right, fine. I also submitted to the reboot. It's not Double Deer. It's an inmate from South Hill State Prison. Doug Judy. Hello? Hey, Peralta. What's good? Hey, Doug. Are you OK? I wanted you to know, and I've been thinking about it a lot. I didn't mean what I said. I'm glad I met you. Sure, it ended badly, but we had some good times along the way, too. We went on a cruise together. We flew on Mark Cuban's jet. We ate at a restaurant next to Gail from Top Chef. Yeah, and then you got so mad at her about Last Chance Kitchen. I wasn't mad. I just think it's insane that they make you go online to watch it. The point is, I wouldn't trade those moments for anything. I'm choosing to focus on the journey. Wait a minute. What language is that? I don't know. Maybe Dutch. There's a lot of that in here. You know how active the Dutch Mafia is in Jersey? Judy. OK, fine. Surprise! I'm in Amsterdam. I escaped from prison. My wife and I are living a life here now. Amsterdam is great. Jake, they got universal health care. Legalized marijuana. And the workers are treated so much better. But you know what the best part is? That you're a free man again. No, stroopwafels. They're like these wait for cookies with caramel in between. Oh, yeah, I think I've seen those at Trader Joe's. Uh, well, look, I guess I'm happy that you're happy. Well, I owe it all to you. What do you mean? I think you know what I mean. Uh, nope. No idea. Really? Because after we hugged goodbye, I noticed your pin was in my pocket. Oh, that's weird. It was? Uh-huh. And then I used it to mind freak myself out of my cuffs and then out of jail. Well, then I guess it's certainly lucky that it ended up in your pocket. I wonder how it got there. Yeah, well, I guess we'll never know. Well, however it got there, I'm glad it did. I love you, Peralta. Love you too, Judy. Tigers and Tukes! Tigers and Tukes. 
I know how to solve this. We just have to find out which football player had third period with Brandon Bliss. We need his class schedule. Yeah, but where are we gonna find that? In the coolest room in the school. Good lord! You could have just picked the lock. I know, I'm sorry. I'm just so amped up about admin. The precinct will not be shut down. Oh, yeah. They decided to shut down the 7-4 instead. Wait. I don't understand. Apparently, the community came to our aid. There was a swell of online support orchestrated by an organization called Ginazone. I think you mean Ginazone. <laughs> I was behind the bar the whole time. Another great Gina Linetti entrance. I told you, you can't be back here. And I told you, I already am. What did you do? I was live streaming a prank when Captain Holt made his big speech about how you did the right thing for the city. I guess people were moved. They were like, what can we do to help? And I said, call the commissioner's office. The G-Hive is real. I can't believe you did it. Gina, you're a legend. <laughs> to the 9-9. Nine 9-9. Nine. Nine nine nine. Nine. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, <laughs> get a drink. Detective Peralta has made a collar in the jewelry store heist. Way to go, Jakey. That's OK. No, he didn't get sufficient evidence to make it stick. So we have the next 48 hours to fix his mistake. Oh. What evidence did you have when you arrested this guy? Some pretty ironclad stuff. Dustin, it's been a while. Mind if I ask you a few questions? Well, well, well. If it isn't Joe Peralta. <laughs> That's it, you're under arrest. Case closed. Adrian. What are you doing here? I'm an insurance investigator now. I thought you were in Alaska. Oh, yeah, I was after Rosa and I broke up, but then I accidentally killed a protected buffalo. Self-defense. Next thing I know, fish and game are all over my ass. I ended up in a fight with a bear, and I had to think to myself, why am I even here? Wait a minute, you fought a bear? Big time. The trick on that, headbutt him in the penis, push him over a cliff. Uh, I bet that works with a lot of animals. Only the male ones. Learn that the hard way. How's life as an insurance investigator? It's amazing. At Graystar Mutual, they let me do whatever I want. As long as I'm getting that job done, and you know I am. Last week, I waterboarded a dude. Oh, that's not illegal. Doesn't matter. I'm not a cop. Anyway. <laughs> Gina! Hey, ho, 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 ho. Hey! Hey, Jake. You've been alive forever. How'd you use to cure hangovers? Oh, I didn't drink. I was, however, extremely into cocaine for most of 1986. I gotta tell you the truth, Hitchcock. Can I tell you the truth? You and me, man, we're gonna be co-captains. But first, I'm taking you to Japan. I'm already packed. I had three heart attacks that year and declared bankruptcy. 